Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new life for me And I'm feeling good mm, I'm feeling good Hello and good evening to Globetrotting with Gillespie. Me, Dana Gillespie, in the Temple of Art and Music, the TAM, as it's known, and that's in the Elephant Castle in London. And tonight's a very special night because, in fact, it's an evening of Anthony Newley music. Now, some of you may not even know who Anthony Newley was, but he wrote amazingly famous songs. And for those of us that were around in the late 50s and early 60s, he was a mega huge star. But one of the performers in the show tonight is also a mega huge star. So I'd like you to meet Lenny Beige. How are you, Dana? Beautiful to I'm, see you. Oh, thank you, Lenny. Now, I'd like you to tell me about what you get up to, because what kind of performances you do. Okay, I, I'm a, I, and I'm talking about this tonight. I'm, uh, in England, they're, they're very sniffy about being, uh, as I call, an all-round entertainer. People are like, oh, you know, just, just stick to one thing. Americans embrace that kind of laying out your stall. This is what I do, I do it all. Um, so, you know, people like Sammy Davis, um, you know, those incredible, Dick Van Dyke, they were multi-talented people. So when Newley made it big, he loved America because they really accepted him. So I've taken a leaf out of Newley's book and when he passed in 1999 and he was like a father figure to me, a mentor and a, a, a dear, dear family friend. You look almost rather like him actually. With, it's been so It's before. the hair. It is. And <laughs> unlike Tony's, I can take mine off and put it in a little box. <laughs> with holes in it. But um, so for me, I can, I can do it big. I can do big showbiz. I can bring it down, make it more intimate. Last show that I did was a tribute to Newley, which is a, a series of letters and me singing his songs with just Malcolm on the piano. Tonight, we're ratcheting it up a couple of notches. Incredible guests interpreting the genius of Newley. And he did write some of the greatest songs in the 20th century canon. Well, uh, well I was, I'm embarrassed that I knew so little about what he wrote. Tell us some names for the viewers who may not know. Well, you've really got to start at the biggest, I think. And yeah. that is Feeling Good, yeah. which you are singing. And my God, I mean, it was the Nina Simone version, I suppose, that everyone knows. But newly, it was written for her second musical, Roar of the Grease Paint, Smell of the Crowd. Um, and that musical, even before it opened on Broadway, there were more hits before it opened from other artists than any other musical previously. So they were standards, like Feeling Good. What Kind of Fool Am I was another song. Uh, then he wrote Willy Wonka, the film. So you've got Candyman, uh, Pure Imagination. I mean, these are, you know, they are standards. You know, the, yeah. you know, it's like they are international songs. They are known. We've all got a favorite version of those songs. But he was, for lyrics, he would, he used to, he was worked a lot with Leslie Brickus, didn't he? Absolutely. Who so we was lost he or more, yeah, we lost him R.I.P. Leslie. Yeah. But was he more of a musician? I mean. No, the, the interesting thing was both of them were musically illiterate. You know, they couldn't write. It's like Lionel Bart. Like couldn't Lionel Bart, exactly. Couldn't write a note. No, but, but it was that thing of having the tune in the head. Yeah. Newly very obsessed by lyrics as well. Yeah. And they had Ian Fraser, who was like the third point of their triumvirate, of their, yeah. of their triangle, who was the arranger, who was the one that they would sing down the phone to, going, we've got a great idea for a song. And credits always got to go to the arranger, as you know, for, especially yeah. for, for songs that were written for musicals, to realize that. And, uh, but I think they, they really did share the music and lyric writing duty. It was, it was complete symbiosis, you know, they, they, they fed into each other. And of course, people would always remember Newley from, from when he was the artful, the original artful Dodger. Age 14 in David Lean, not David Lean's uh, Oliver Twist with, yeah. uh, it was Alec Guinness, of course. Yes, yeah. brilliant it was. Now, Lenny Beige yes. comes out of the closet occasionally. How often is he Lenny's, I, I'm always, I mean, whether I'm doing live shows... I don't shows mean or, that, I, literally, closety, but... 
listen. Out of the cupboard. Out of the cupboard, exactly. The, I, I like it. It's the, the bespoke wardrobes with the louvered Venetian doors. The, uh, I, I do live shows still. I've got a big Christmas special coming up at the old Dingwalls in Camden, the oh, Camden yeah. Power House. Oh, what day um, is that? That is on the 15th of December. Okay. We've got some great guests for that. And I still and I still do my newly show. I'm doing a Tom Waits show now, which was, I just did last month, first time. So I'm still working away and just giving the people what they want, which is always more beige. <laughs> well, I keep hearing about you on the radio too. Why is that? You've got, you've got a Because radio Martin show. and I, Martin Green is one of the, the four people behind tonight's show with myself, Martin, Tris Penner, and Mike Smith, who is the publisher of Newly's mm -hmm. uh, catalog. Martin has been the, the soundtrack to when I arrived in the West End. He, his music was the music we all danced to. I mean, it's not his own music, of course. He just simply puts on records. How hard can it be? But it can be. And the thing is, he's you brilliant. You've got to have taste. You've got to have the, the best right taste. Tape. And he was buying up records when nobody would, you know, wouldn't even give him a second glance. He was the one who knew people were going to dance to this. And so we do a radio show on Soho Radio every month. Yeah, I think I did it once. And you him. did it a few um, months ago. Yes. And so, so well... <laughs> One, I don't like to put dates on things, because except I know about your Christmas thing. Yeah. But has Lenny Beige got bookings way up into next year? Or? There are a few. There are always a few. And then we're talking about even a Christmas single for next year, weirdly. I've got a new Christmas single out, called, uh, which is called Jewish for Christmas. Um, <laughs> we've got a 10-foot Hanukkah bush in my hall. Uh, I actually rhyme uh, Hanukkah with Auntie Veronica, which I'm quite pleased with as a rhyming couplet. Well, I'm just happy yeah. that somebody uses the word bush. <laughs> there is no bush exactly. anymore. I know. You go to the ladies' sauna and there's no bush. It's like everyone looks like a dolphin or a porpoise. It's weird. <laughs> weird and strange. It gives me something to hone in on a bush. Do you know? I mean, to hold on to. I quite agree. I'm old fashioned though. Mind you, you've got the bush on your head. For exactly. Now. And like I said, this is my showbiz bush. And then there's a more <laughs> relaxed evening bush. They're also, it's a wig for all, all occasions. And I, I have to touch. It's, it, ladies and gentlemen, it's lovely sort of bry nylon y stuff. Um, As I said, if you come at me with a naked flame, I'll go up like an oil refinery. <laughs> but it's, uh, the, I, I, I thought it was, it's that kind of halfway, you see, this is beautiful. This is like it was made for a Maharaja and these incredible well, it was, it bangles. It was made in India and these come from India. Fabulous. I'm nearly always dressed in, I love India. Fabulous. But I mean, you, where on earth did you, who on earth wears that in real life? Well, obviously well, I do. Uh, yes. Uh, the the, the Dicky Bow, the man who, who makes all my clothes, uh, Morris Montague of Old Street, we weave with care the hair that you wear um, and the bling. Uh, the bling of course and this one was sold to me uh, by my uncle Maury on on his deathbed um, <laughs> beautiful so you know I, I try and keep up the I think it's important to be show business because you know we're living in a time when it, it's just you know it's it, it, it's homogenized and I'd like to still be bespoke well I quite agree with you because actually certainly in the music scene I'm always despairing because everything you hear everyone's voice sounds the same because oh they're all God, yeah. goes through the same machinery. Absolutely. So there's very little individuality. And also there's no margin for mistake. And I think the mistakes are where the beauty is as well. The, oh, in the, the strange <laughs> moments where you go, you know, where you, or I wouldn't do it like that again, but you need to hear that. You need to kind of embrace, they're not errors, they aren't mistakes, but it's yeah. the, it's finding your way. And I think, you know, and especially in your genre as well, there's not enough showbiz. Well, my days of treading the boards, as in musicals, are definitely over. But you'd go if somebody offered you one, would you go back and be in a musical? I would. I would. I haven't done a musical for a long time. I did a musical version of King Lear many years ago with uh, the very young Dean Gaffney from EastEnders. I do. You know, I I can't commit. Can yeah. you commit? They're like a year-long contract. If you want to be doing that for a year. No, when I did Superstar in 1972, the only reason I said yes because they amazingly gave me a three-month contract. Okay, I stayed for a year in the end. Yeah. But, um, you know, it is that thing of serious commitment. Absolutely. But I'm so looking forward to seeing Lenny Beige tonight, tonight to, ah. do, to do his thing. Which, what songs are you singing? I'm doing a, a lesser known one to open the show, which is called It's a Musical World from his third musical, The Good Old Bad Old Days. It's, but it's yeah. a sort of quite a, 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 a very apposite opening number, doing a little bit of pure imagination. I'm doing Oompa Loompa as well from Willy Wonka. Right. And my God, you're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm going on after you. Yeah. I've got to go on after you. How oh, dreadful! Uh, how difficult! Not at He'll all. Be, anyway, we're going to have fun tonight. Oh my God! Anyway, yeah. Lenny, I want to thank you for thank coming you, on Dana. to Globetrotting. Beautiful. 
And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this little bit of interview. I think we'll be able to see a little bit of um, the show tonight. We'll cut to it now. And thank you for watching. Till next Beautiful time. Beautiful people. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful people. Not all of them, obviously. It Some goes of them. with your Brian Nylon. <laughs> I knew Brian Nylon once. He still owes me a tenner. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. Rivers running free, oh, you know how I feel. Blossom on the tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good I'm feeling good Dragonfly out in the sun You know what I mean Butterflies out having fun You know what I mean Sleep in peace when day is done I know what I mean And this old day is a new world And a bold world for me And I'm feeling good mm, yeah I'm feeling Stars, when you shine, you know how I feel. Scent on the pine, ooh, you know how I feel. Freedom is mine, that's how I feel. And this new dawn is a new day, it's a new world for me. Like the Oompa Oompa